we have a mountain to climb. And as the followers of Jesus, we're invited to journey to the mountaintop for this Transfiguration Sunday experience. We hold on to the energy, the energy of God to surround us, to give us the courage and strength we need for the journey that is ahead. So come, together, let us journey to the mountaintop. In the stories of scripture preceding our reading for today, we will have read that Jesus and his followers were traveling in the region of Bethsaida and the villages around Caesarea Philippi. In a time when Jesus needed to get away from the crowds, he went to a nearby mountain. Reading from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 9, verses 2 to 9. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And Jesus was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling bright, such as no one on earth could brighten them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us set up three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Peter didn't know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the Beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. Holy Wisdom, Holy Word, Thanks be to God. Imagine. Can you imagine what it would look like from that mountaintop? That time when the disciples were invited by Jesus to journey with him into that wonderful experience we call the transfiguration. Can you imagine just being one of the disciples one of them to be invited by Jesus into this very intimate moment, but they didn't know what that intimate moment was going to be or how spectacular it was going to be. But they went. They went with Jesus because they trusted him. And they wanted to learn more about who he was and, and spend as much time as they could with him while he was sharing his ministry and his gifts with them. And so for them, for them to be invited was an honor, and it was a privilege. And that's our honor and our privilege to once again be invited by Jesus, along with his disciples, to journey to the mountaintop and to experience the revelation, the exposure of the fullness of who God was through Jesus and how significant that Jesus was in the whole list and line of prophets that's built up the foundation of our faith. That mountaintop experience is, is one that uh, we often hear about and and it's an occasion for us to think about the, those wonderful vistas that we see from the mountaintop that you can't see if we remain on the plains. When we're elevated from the plains to the top of hilltops, we can see more. We can see further. Things are revealed to us that we may not know or may not have the opportunity to see. 
we can only imagine that when they arrived to the top of that hill, that spectacular vista, that it was clear. That it was a clear day and they could see for miles around. And before them they could see the entire landscape of where they had been and where they had been sharing a ministry with Jesus along the, the Galilean region of the cities and the towns and the villages, along the lake shores, along the paths that, that wove in amidst the lives of people, ordinary people, people looking for something different, people looking for a change, looking for the gift of hope, clinging and hoping for something that would enliven them and give them a reason to, to move forward in their lives. And they looked down from that mountaintop and they saw communities changed because of what Jesus was saying and how he was reaching out and connecting with others, healing the sick, inspiring those that were living on the margins to, to feel loved, and challenging the authorities of the day. It was a wonderful place and such a wonderful place to be that the disciples did not want to leave. For it was there that, that in their presence arrived Elijah and Moses, two phenomenal prophets of the Hebrew faith. And they saw them standing with Jesus, and, and in that moment of wonder and awe, they wanted, it, they wanted it to stay. They didn't want it to end. And then there was a voice of God. Once again, like we heard at the baptism of Jesus, the voice of God saying, this is my beloved And all of that energy, that enthusiasm, that, that joy of being in that experience was something they wanted to hold on to and they wanted to savor it and build houses and say, Jesus, let's just stay here. Let's just stay here and, and enjoy this moment of, of the revelation of God in our midst. But it was not so. A cloud descended, but when the cloud lifted and the atmosphere became clear again, Jesus knew it was time to move on, to move forward. And so they turned and they walked the path down that mountaintop into the communities, into the plains, into the lives of people who were, who were waiting down there to, to hear the good news to once again hear the message of God's love and to learn more through that, that wonderful person named Jesus about how God's love was being made real. Throughout this season of Epiphany, we've been journeying through these days and these Sundays with the increased light in our natural world to be our image to hold on to as, as we continue to grow in the fullness and the image of God's love made known to us in our faithfulness and in our discipleship as the followers of Jesus. Throughout these seasons, this season of, of Epiphany, we have learned more about who Jesus was and how God was working through him to reveal that, that light, that love that God sent in our midst. And throughout that season that we're just ending here today on this season of Epiphany with this Transfiguration Sunday, we've learned, we've learned how to be more full disciples of Jesus, how to be better disciples of Jesus how to embrace that light and let it grow and glow within our midst so that as we continue our journey forward, we may be able to share that light more abundantly. 
We can't stay in those moments of wonder and joy like the disciples wanted to on that mountaintop. We have to be like Jesus and the disciples and get back into doing ministry about being those examples of how God's love is to be lived out in the world. We need to go from our mountaintops of of joyful, wonderful experiences and hold on to them to give us the energy and the passion to be God's messengers in the world. It doesn't happen just at the mountaintops. It happens in the midst of the people in the communities, and along the pathways that we walk as we share our faith and live in the light of God's presence, holding on to the lessons of faith that we've heard and learned and enjoyed and celebrated. And we are called to be God's messengers and the followers of Jesus in the world, in our community. So we can't stay on the mountaintops. We can't stay in the past where things were much different in our churches than they are today. We're to live in the moment and to see the wonders and the opportunities in which God presents to us on how to be the church today. The church of the disciples was not on the mountaintop. The church of Jesus Christ with the disciples was among the people and in the communities. And so that even though Jesus was transformed in their midst and shone brightly, more dazzling white than anyone could ever achieve, that glowing presence was the energy they needed to hold on to as they continued to walk with Jesus and continue to make his message, the message of God, come alive in the world. It wouldn't have happened if they'd stayed on that mountaintop. It only happened because they came down and continued to be with the people. May we be mindful and aware of the ways in which we are called to be among the people and with the people of our community of faith, the community that surrounds us and in the world, being the light and the glowing radiance of God's love through our words, through our deeds, and through our actions. We're not called to stay cloistered within the walls of a church. We're called to explode with brilliant presence as the light of God's love in the world. May through our words and through what we do in our ministry as we continue our discipleship and our following of Jesus, may through our transformation and how God calls us to transform. May we make a difference in the world. Let us go forward from this mountaintop experience and continue our journey as the faithful and faith-filled people of God and followers of Jesus. Amen. As a community of faith, with hearts and spirits united in worship, I invite you to join your heart with mine in prayer. God, you are with us in all the places of our lives. When we journey to the mountaintops, you are there. 
When we walk along rough paths in daily living, you are there. When clouds overshadow and dismay surrounds us, you are there. When the sun is shining and we are glowing with abundance of energy and exhilarated with overwhelming joy, you are there. When we are alone and when we are surrounded by crowds, you are there. Thank you for your constant and enduring presence with us in all the places of our living. As you are with us in all times and places, may we reflect your radiant love and presence each moment of our days so that others may know, sense, and feel you surrounding them as well. Through our words, may they hear you. Through our actions, may they witness you. Through our faith, may they come to know you, know you and your abundant love, grace and compassion. You call us to welcome each other in ways that reflect how you have welcomed us. With our arms and hearts open, you embraced us and hold us and inspire us. With our hearts open this day, we reveal to you our prayers. Our prayers for others, our prayers for the world, your creation, for people and places close to our hearts and lives, and for those who are at distant locations, yet their struggles and challenges weigh heavy upon us. As we offer the prayers of our hearts, we know you will carry this weight with us and give us the strength by our faith to make a difference in the lives of many. Receive the prayers we're carrying in our hearts this day. Prayers for those dealing with loss and grief. Prayers for those enduring medical and health issues. Prayers for those trying to survive, yet challenged by housing and food insecurities. Prayers for those who find these winter days exhausting and enveloped with isolation, loneliness, and being alone. Prayers for those enfolded with depression and living with various forms of mental illnesses and prayers for those who are walking beside them to offer comfort, companionship, and encouragement. Prayers for those living through war, chaos, traumatic experiences, and the memories of those events that are held in our memory banks and constantly resurface. These are a few of the cares and concerns we carry in our hearts, God, and there are more. All of us uniting our hearts together carry our own cares, personal ones, private ones, prayers for certain people and certain situations around the world and from the circle of our daily living. In this moment of silence, we offer to you, listening God, our personal prayers. Receive our prayers, great source of love. Hold all for whom we have offered in prayer and hold each of us in your tender love. We offer our open hearts and prayers to you in the name of Jesus who inspires us to blend our voice with those around us as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, 
forever and ever. Amen. I'm going to take a leap of faith. I'm going to take a leap of faith that, that inspires me to share the gifts of my life with the world and with others. I invite you to take this leap of faith with me. Be brave in the sharing of your gifts. And may all that we do together transform the world and the community in which God calls us to serve. We present our gifts and offerings today, and we offer them many times every day of the week. For the gifts we offer, let us pray. Generous God, transform what we offer this day for your work in this world. Transfigure us in our giving that we might know your joyful spirit through the spiritual practice of committed offerings. Inspire us to live into your abundance through the ministry we share. Amen. As the followers of Jesus, we are called to put our faith into action. So as we leave this time of worship today, may we move out into God's world to shine brightly with the radiance of God's love. Let us go. Let us be. Let us live in the light of God's love.